finally, yes, it is time because there's less than one week left. I'm excited. Hey guys, as you can see, today is different because I'm talking about the election, the Danish Folketingsvalg, right? And that is, well, we have an election next week on November 1st. So it's kind of a big deal. And I've been talking to some of my students and I realized that actually many of you, you don't really know how the system works, like what the parties are and how you uh, elect the prime minister and all that kind of stuff. So I want to talk about that today. Um, yeah, let's begin. So basically here I made something for you. This is the Danish political spectrum. Now, there are different ways of doing this. I'm aware of that. You could also make it like an axis here, like tick, 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 because there are social issues and then there are economic issues. So it's not just left to right. But this is how I've done it for now, so you can get a rough idea of our political parties. As you can see, there's a lot. <laughs> there's really, really a lot. It's crowded, especially in here. So gonna take you through them just a little bit for each party and then I'm also gonna uh, tell you how we elect the prime minister and what's different about this election compared to normally so uh, yeah it's it's gonna be really fun I've been looking forward to this for many weeks so yeah if you're curious if you want to know how Danish politics work then this is it all right cool cool let's see what we got here so it says the Danish political spectrum, if we start from the left, and like furthest to the left, the far left, if you will. Here we have Fri Grønne. Yeah, Fri Grønne, you can almost tell by the name that it's something far left. Fri Green or Fri Green Ones or Greens, depending how you want to translate it. So, you know, this is like as far as you can get to the left. Now, in some ways, you could say alternative in this list is further left. But the reason why I put them here is because they have a very, very ambitious idea for agriculture. They want to make, uh, I think it's 95% of it, um, like, what's it called? Vegan or more or less, like non-animalistic by uh, 2030. So that is very, very ambitious for a country that has so much export of pork. Um, but yeah. Nonetheless, that is just one example. And of course, you know, they are very open to uh, immigrants and foreigners in general, uh, all the kind of stuff, because it's like far left. They care about welfare and they want to tax the rich, right? In essence. So that's like a common thing on this side of the spectrum. So that's Fri Grønne. And the leader, the main guy from Fri Grønne, he was actually in Alternative before. But then he was like, nah, I'm gonna make my own party, right? Actually, a lot of people left. Alternative. I'll get to that now. Alternative, which means the alternative. It was um, it was formed in. Let me see, 2015. Yeah, that was the year, and it was right before the election back then in 2015. And uh, it was some people from other parties, and mainly um, Uffe Elbeck. He started it. Uh, he's like the uh, the leader there. And he was really, really happy when they won. I went well, not when they won, but when they got a lot of votes in 2015, he was like, oh, yeah, it's crazy. Like, I'm not exaggerating. This is how he, he reacted, but in Danish. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> they, uh, they had a really good start, but recently not so well. You know, a lot of people have been not taking them so seriously, so it's not going super for them. But they're still there, and they're like, uh, trying to pull pull the Prime Minister, Mette Frederiksen, in a more green direction, you know, thinking about the environment and stuff like that. So they're really ambitious about that. Alternative. And they got a new leader. It's a woman, but she's actually... <laughs> so that's a little bit funny, but hopefully she will be. All right. Then we have in his list... A red green alliance or unity list now sometimes there's more than one translation but in is unity so yeah and this is uh, also like fairly far left it used to be the furthest left like just eight years ago alternative free coin didn't exist so yeah and 
Yeah, it's a lot of the same stuff. You know, they talk a lot about uh, welfare and um, the rich people should pay more taxes and stuff like that, social justice, uh, what have you. Uh, they have this interesting thing where they have a rotation principle. The leader is not really a leader, it's just like the main person who represents them. Uh, I think there's a rotation every four years. It's fairly frequently. It's Yeah, so now we have my V-lesson, right? And then... Um, and yeah, so they're there. And when it was founded in the early 90s, some of their earlier members, they actually used to be in the Communist Party. Like, you know, there was a Communist Party before, you know, 89. So yeah, there's some, some history, and you can look it up if you're more curious than that. Okay, then, whoops, sorry. Then we are moving to SF, or Socialistic Folkeparti. Right? Socialistic Folk Party. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good in English. And this is a little closer to the center. They still care about <clears throat> they still care about the same issues, but they they don't want to go as far as these parties, right? And they're more willing to compromise. And they're also more willing to accept some maybe military expansion. So yeah, but but they're still like left, like left of center. You know, they talk a lot about uh, the kids in, in daycare and kindergartens like they need to have it better and all that kind of stuff it's something they've been talking a lot about and they're also trying to push the you know prime minister to have more left-wing policies so that is basically sf and then we have socialdemokratiet and this is of course the party of the prime minister Mette Frederiksen. this is the government right in our current government there is only one party and that is socialdemokratiet so it's what you call mindretalsregering, okay? And sometimes you'll have two parties in a government, or even three, but now we only have one. So that is where the the power is, socialdemokratiet, and it's a, it's a very old party. It's uh, more than a hundred years, I'm pretty sure. It's very old. So um, yeah, they have moved further to the right, or at least to the center, in recent years. And some people like that, some don't. But that is just a fact that they have moved further to the right. Yeah. And they're more willing to compromise than they have been earlier. So, let's see if they win. Mette Frederiksen has been the uh, Prime Minister since um, June 2019. And let's see if she wins re-election. After that, we have Radikale Venstre. Now, Radikale Venstre, I don't really like this... Uh, translation of it radical left because they're not like radical far left but you know radical radical so yeah it's because they're not venstering this is all the party over here which is funny enough on the right and <laughs> we'll get to that in a second yeah so so they're similar to social democracy in some ways but they're more like they want a little more conservative uh fiscal policy and like when it comes to um the economy they're a little more like mm, let's not be too far left with that um, but funny enough, recently it seems that they care more about immigrants than Socialdemokratiet does. So that's a little bit interesting. That's why you cannot just say that, oh, this is like further left or further right. It's like, mm, it depends on the issue. Right? It's not that simple. But still, it's nice to see it on a spectrum. So you got like an overview. Radikale Venstre. And I'll talk more about them later because uh, they are the reason why this election is happening so soon. I mean, Mette Frederiksen, she could wait. She could wait until uh, June next year to write it out. But no, Radikale Venstre forced her, pretty much. So yeah. In the middle here, the political center, it is pretty crowded. I mean, we got Moderaterne. And Moderaterne started by uh, this guy, you might have heard of him, Lars Løkke Rasmussen. He was uh, prime minister before. He was prime minister from 2009 to 2011, and also from 2015 to 2019. And then when he lost in 2019, he was like, see ya. And he left his party, Venstre, all right? And then he came back after some time, and he's like, yo, I got my own party. And it was Moderaterne, the moderates, which is funny because it's like so clearly inspired by the Danish TV show Born. 
or maybe it's just a coincidence, but it is a good show. So, uh -huh. now the thing about him is that he seems to have moved uh, closer to center with age or with time. Like he's now willing to work with Socialdemokratiet. Even in the last election, he was talking about that. He was like, oh, you know, maybe we could do government together, like in the middle of an election. And then Mette Frederiksen, she was like making fun of it. She's like, do you want it, Lars? You don't want it? Like, what's going on? Right? Lars Lykke and Mette Frederiksen, they were like debating. Uh, he's not running for prime minister now, but let's see if something could happen anyway. I'll get to that later. So that's moderate. And it is, as you would guess, Sort of a moderate centrist position. It's not like far left, far right. It's pretty moderate. Um, maybe his uh, economic policies are a little more to the right. But um, the dude has got a heart. I think I can say that for a fact. All right, and he likes beer. Then we have Christendemokraterne. Christendemokraterne, the Christian Democrats. It doesn't sound very Danish now, does it? It's... Yeah, there's a reason why they are not actually in the parliament. They tried. At least the last three elections that I can remember since I've been able to, to vote. They've been trying to get in, but they just haven't. So, uh, yeah, but you know, they keep trying. So they think about, you know, humane policies and, you know, something that benefits people spiritually. Although they're not like, you know, religious wearing a cross or anything hard on their sleep type of stuff. But yeah, you can feel like there's that sort of spiritual dimension that, that they do care about values in a way, and they talk differently than some of the other parties. Yeah, so there's a little bit of left, there's a little bit of right. right? Let, let's see if they get in. I'm personally skeptical, but you never know. Right. If we are moving a little bit right here, then we have Venstra, which funny enough means left. And that's just, for historical reasons, that is called that. But... Yeah, you have Venstre, which is slightly to the right. And they have a prime minister candidate, and it's uh, Jakob Ellemann Jensen. Right? And uh, yeah, there's actually another one in conservative, we'll get to that. And you know, it's typical like, like right wing, like uh, you know, lower taxes, and let's not be too ambitious with the climate, you know, because it's hard for the economy and, and stuff like that. So a little fiscally conservative by Danish standards but not as much as some other parties further right, right? They are the center-right party, which is why they usually have the candidate. They actually ruled the Danish politics for like 10 years from 2001 to 2011. Um, what's his name? Anders Fogh. Anders Fogh Rasmussen, he won in 2001, and then again in 2005, and then again in 2007. Then he left in 2009 because he wants to be a, a what was it, a general secretary in NATO. So he did that, and that's why Lars Lukke became prime minister without being elected. Right? He just took over. So yeah, so they had the power for 10 years, and then some people were like, oh, we're tired of this. But then they had the power again from 2015 to 2019. Right? So yeah, it's switching a little bit back and forth. One period is four years. That's how it is. But in Denmark, there's no limit, like there's no term limit. You can be prime minister four times if you're good enough if you're popular enough so that's kind of cool okay then we have conservative they are quite similar Venstein conservative mm, it's hard to mention like any big differences differences i would say um, but something that is important at least this time around is that conservative they want to get rid of this thing called top scat now scat means taxes or tax and i know it has more than one meaning but that's essentially what it means here because they don't think it's fair that you are like taxing the rich people so much, like 50%. So that's sort of their argument. Right? They don't like that. But then, like Winston, they, no, no, we'll, we'll keep that in place. I mean, they don't like it either, but they think it's too ambitious to get rid of it. So yeah, conservative is a little more to the right. right? And you can call them conservative or conservatives. Right? What do you want to call it? A little bit further right, we have Liberal Alliance. And uh, yeah, it's funny to say Liberal Alliance. But of course, uh, Liberal here, if any Americans are watching, it doesn't mean Liberal like left. It means Liberal like fiscally, you know, free market, all that kind of stuff. Right? Just uh, live on that left. So to them, 
it's all about you should keep more of your money, lower the taxes, privatize everything. And then they're mostly about tolerance. Like when it comes to social issues, they don't have any problems you could say with immigrants. They are pretty tolerant tolerant with like religious freedom. So yeah, there's that. But fiscally, they're like free market, free marketing, privatized. That's their big thing. And they've been they've been lucky recently, or they've been good in terms of strategy because Alex, oh, his name nobody can pronounce it. Alex Vaunop Slack Slau. It's a very funny last name. He's very young. He's like thirty something. Uh, he uh, he's been on TikTok. You know, he's been a genius in that sense, uh, and that's really really been helping them in the polls that they might get some more votes this time. So that's clever. Liberal Alliance is a fairly young party. I think it was f- formed in 2007, maybe. It's hmm, it's not that old. It was also called a New Alliance. Some people broke out of, I think it was Radikale Winstein Conservative, and then there's a new party. We have so many parties in Denmark, it's insane. All right, moving to DF, or DF, Dansk Folkeparti, Danish Folk Party. Some of you might have heard of it. Uh, from an immigrant's perspective, it's probably not probably not the friendliest party. Um, they are known for their very uh, strict policies or suggestions. Um, especially, yeah, these past 20-25 years, there's been a lot of talk and they have often been the ones to say, tough on immigrants, you know, tough on immigrations and... If someone is convicted, we should kick them out. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that has sort of been their main thing, right? Uh, but another thing they also care a lot about is like taking care of old people, right? Or that they're taking care of, taken care of. Uh, they talk a lot about care for our elders and all that kind of stuff. And some people have theories that's because that the members are getting old themselves. I don't know, that's speculation. But yeah, uh, so there's that. But they are, um, they're not that fiscally conservative. They do want to make room for welfare. It's just maybe they want to spend it on something else. They think it should be spent mostly on the elders. Right? They are not doing so well at the moment. It's um, because there are other parties with the same policies or with the same ideology. And there's been some crisis in leadership. You know, they had to get a new leader, and then he totally messed it up. I think everybody would agree from a strategic point of view. Uh, so a lot of people, they escaped. <laughs> they ran away to another body, this Denmark's Democrat, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, so they're not doing so well. There's actually a, a risk that they might not even stay in the parliament this time. Like, they're really, really fighting for their life. All right. They're, they're struggling, so we'll see what happens. Denmark's Demokraterne is a very new party. And uh, the leader here is Inga Stoiper. Some of you might have heard of her before. She used to be in Venstre. And she was, uh, what was it? Integrationsminister. I think. Like she handled integration and stuff like that. Very strict. And some people love her, others hate her. But uh, there's no doubt that she did get a lot of personal votes. So that worked out for her, I suppose. Then she went to prison for something. I don't want to get into the details here, but she was in prison for two months. And then she came out and she made a new party, right? Denmark's Demokraterne. And it's very similar to DF, Dansk Folkeparti. Um, it's, you know, like nationalistic, a little more uh, fiscally conservative and socially conservative. It's, it's that kind of stuff, right? And they seem to be doing quite well in the polls. Like a lot of people are going to vote for them. But let's see how it goes. Polls are only polls. At the very end, we have New Bali. And New Bali, um, it's a funny name, like New Conservative, because Bali means conservative, right? Uh, because conservative can also be like, you know, you're set in your ways. You're sort of, no, I'm doing this like I'm conservative. But Bali is only in a political sense. Okay? So, New Bali is Penil Vermon, and they are, yeah, they might be the furthest right you can get. Um, you know, they want to like, um, what was it? Of course, they want lower taxes and all the usual right wing stuff. 
and they want to shut down the content help center. Content help is the thing you get as welfare, right? So those buildings, those centers where you go and you talk to people, they want to shut them down because they want to have those people work in the private sector instead. There is a bit of a dream here. The further you get on the right, the more they talk about the private sector. And, and the same you could say, well, the opposite you could say about the, the left and what about the public sector. So, yeah. There's, there's a lot of stuff about that. And she's also quite young, their leader, Penelope Vermon. I think she was studying to be an architect or something. So she has a, a different background, not exactly politics. But yeah. So these are the parties. And this was, of course, pretty brief because there are so many parties. It's hard to cover it in great detail. But yeah, now you have like an overview of, of what the options are. Some of you might even be Danish citizens, so you can actually vote. All right, right. One thing I forgot to mention before was alternative. Alternative, they are also kind of fighting for their political life. They might not be in the parliament after the election. Maybe there are just too many parties over here, right? On the left, as well as the right. So many parties. So let's see how it goes. We'll probably get back to the spectrum later because it's so, sort of the overview. But for now, I'm going to move on. Because, yes, I am explaining the system in this video, but it is a Danish video, so let me also give you some vocabulary. Got some stuff here. The main word, the important one, Folketing. Folketing. Okay, so that's Parliament. Yep. Stemme. Stemme. Vote. Mandate. And that's an airplane. I do not control that. Let's take a five second break, shall we? Do 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 do. Alright. Mandate. 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 States Minister. States Minister. Prime Minister. Vel. Vel. Folke Tings. Well, Parliament election. Demokrati. Demokrati. Democracy. Regering. Regering. Government. Party. 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 Støtte parti. Støtte parti. Supporting party. Samarbejde. Samarbejde. Corporation. Venstre. Venstre. Left. Højre. Højre. Right. Centrum, centrum, center, mitten, mitten, the middle, venstre, uh, oh sorry, it's a double here, all right, here we go, venstre fly, venstre fly, left wing, højre fly, Højre fløj. Right wing. Yderste. Yderste. Outermost or furthest. Venstre orienteret. Venstre orienteret. Left leaning. Højre orienteret. Højre. Blok. Wing side, like in politics, left, right. Rød. Rød. Red. Blue. 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 Politiker. Politiker. Politician. Aftale. Aftale. 
agreement or deal. All right, now this time there are no example sentences, but you will see these words a lot if you are checking the news, reading or watching, whatever you're doing, you will see and hear these words and many others, all right? So you can keep these in mind. So the Danish parliament, how exactly does it work? The thing is we have 179 members and it works this way that they each have one mandate and go mandate and you of course need a majority to make changes to the law like whenever there's a vote on something you need a majority that's pretty straightforward so that would be 90 all right you got the majority and they all come from their own district or area these members so if they get the most votes in that area they get into the Folketing, and it's a very layman's way of saying it, but that's essentially how it works. So sometimes someone can be very close, like just a few hundred votes, and they don't get in. Like, but this is this is how it works, and they are of course belonging to various parties. Uh, these candidates, but it's also possible to just be like independent and without a party. Uh, it's rare. <clears throat> it is rare, but we've seen from time to time. There's actually a guy. I think it was a uh, was a Finna because I forgot. No, it was maybe someone else. He was running, and uh, and he did it just as a joke. And he said something like, "I promise there'll be better weather or less wind with a bicycle or something." And then people like voting for him, and he's like, "No, no, no! I gotta stop this! I gotta stop this!" Because he was like really close to to getting in. So yeah. So that's basically how it works. Now. You choose the prime minister because there are so many parties. The the vote is split and the popularity is like you don't own it no matter who you are. You cannot have it as a single party, not when there are so many. So you need votes from other parties. And like the mandates from other political parties, they support you. Studeparti. You could also say parliamentarisk konlay. And that is, well... A coalition. I think you have this in most countries. Again, I know in the US you don't. That's a completely different system. But here in Denmark we have it like that. And there are so many parties. So you're like trying to appeal to, to the voters, but also to the parties that are going to back you. Because if you're like center left, you don't want to scare away those who are like on the far left. Because you need their mandates to become prime minister. It, it's tough. It's, it's uh, really hard to make that happen. But yeah, so the way that usually works is you have, you know, the center-left candidate and then the center-right, right, as it is in most countries. And then they sort of fight it out. And there are also some debates. You can check that on DRDK, right? There's, uh, I think there's been three or something. Yeah, and there's also a debate with all the party leaders. Now, you need a fairly high level of things to watch this maybe. But hey, you can try, right? Partilia debate or states minister candidate debate. Uh, there's a couple of them in, in the RDK. It's good stuff. So, when you have this many parties, it's sort of like there is every political flavor. Right? Like each needs is sort of filled out. Okay? That's basically how it works here. Yeah. So, whatever your preferences are politically, there's a good chance that you are represented or that a party represents you. Now, they might still screw you over, but at least they say that they'll represent you. Okay? So that's how the prime minister is chosen. Now, this is where it gets interesting for me because this is not just standard. Uh, this is a little bit unusual. You know, normally you have one candidate from the left and one from the right. It's center left, center right. So that's Socialdemokratie and Venstre. But this year, for the first time in many years, you have two on the right side, Inc. Blow Block, for the right-leaning parties. You have Jakob Ellemann Jensen from Venstre, and you have Søren Pape Poulsen from Conservative. So, this is interesting because they are so similar in their policies. There are differences, but there are not that many. Right? And uh, the reason for this, according to Søren Pape himself, uh, was because that they are so popular like they're almost as popular or more popular than Vinsla at some point, I think back in August. So, you know, he, he'd been thinking about it for a while because they were like, you know, it's looking good in the polls. And then finally he decided, yo, I want to be prime minister. And so 
he's running. And it went really, really well for a while. But then now he took a dive in the polls, like it's not going so well. And there's been some cases, you know, um, something in his personal life and he, he got divorced from his husband. So it's not so much that, it's more that his husband was doing something that wasn't totally okay. And yeah, so his private life has been covered. It's not so, I think it's a little bit dirty the way they're covering it. But anyway, um, and then he also said something very unfortunate. Uh, he he basically said that Greenland is Africa on ice. <laughs> so yeah, that doesn't really flatter anyone. And then his whole thing with the top scat, you know, that he wants to get rid of that tax is also not very popular. So it looks like he kind of dropped the ball uh, strategically, whether you like him or not. But uh, yeah, let's see. But I think that he would not have um, decided to run for prime minister if he knew that, if he had known it would be this hard, because it is hard and he wasn't prepared for that, it seems. Jakob Ellemann Jensen is sort of like the default candidate. Right? Some people say he's the right guy. I'll say, nah, he's not. Uh, his father was also a politician. He died a few months ago, Uwe Ellemann Jensen. And uh, he was uh, he was not prime minister, but he was a very high rank, I think, uh, minister. It's like a secretary of state type of stuff. Okay. So yeah, let's see. Let's see who wins. Now, I wrote a little thing here as well. Some people, it's not everybody, but they're saying, mm, maybe, maybe Lars Lüge could become prime minister. Why? Because his party right now, they're looking really good in the polls. It's looking quite well for him. So there's a chance. And they asked him, like the reporters, they ask him like, hey Lars, if you get enough votes, you want to be prime minister? And he's like, I'm, I'm not going to reject it. Like if it so happens that I'm this popular, then okay, yeah, sure. Right? Now he said it in a more professional way, but that's the gist of it. So let's see, this is interesting. Maybe this was his plan all along. Maybe he's like, I'm going to pretend to be a moderate and to point at whoever and support them, but I want to be prime minister. Now this is speculation, but who knows? He's a smart dude. He understands the game. He's been in politics for many, many years. I think like 30 years or something. He is 58. Yeah, I think he's 58. So he's very experienced. Let's see how it goes. Now, here's something with Mette Frederiksen, our current prime minister from Socialdemokratiet. She has openly said she's invited to this broad coalition, this broad government across the center. So she says that, oh, I'm willing to make a government with uh, Venstre and Conservative, you know, across the, the middle or whatever, across the center. And uh, Radikale Venstre and Moderaterne, they're like, yeah, that's cool. We'll like government with the center-right parties. Then you can say bye-bye to any policy concerning the climate uh, or anything that's like important for a, a left-winger. And, and on the right, there are like like Venstre and Conservative themselves, they've said, no, we don't want to do that because we don't agree with your policy. And Mette, and I'm quoting them, you want to be prime minister. You want us to support you in the government. So they say that she just wants to be prime minister at any cost, that she just wants the power. That's an idea they're floating. Well, so uh, it seems unlikely to happen, but nobody knows. And that's what's so exciting about this election, because there's so many variables, like who's going to support who. You know, it's it's so unpredictable, moderat, and it's probably going to be Mette Frederiksen, but maybe not. Yeah. So that's really good. Now, the question is, why now? Why are we having the election this soon when you could, in theory, wait until June? Well, it's because... Um, you guys might have heard of the whole mink case. Right? There's some mink, mink farms where the animals they were put down and they shouldn't have been. It was illegal. Uh, so they gave an illegal um, order to the farmers. Then they started killing the mink. And then, um, then they found out later, like two days later or something, oh, we don't actually have the legal justification to say this. So that's kind of a big deal. So, you know, there's been like this investigation by some independent um, experts and then they came with this report and it was quite critical of Mette Frederiksen and other people working in the government saying, you kind of messed up here. 
right? but that they didn't know that they did something wrong. So you couldn't exactly say it was illegal, but this was really, really bad. So naturally, all the blue parties, the right wing parties, they're like, all right, you know what? We should get a lawyer to look at this. Maybe a lawyer needs to see if there should be some impeachment trial. Right? And then the red parties, the left wing parties, they were like, no, we're not going to do that. Right? So they stood with their prime minister. You could say whether you like that or not. Some say it's fishy and others, they say it's all good. Um, Radikale Venstre. Right? We're missing an S here. My bad. Radikale Venstre. They, uh, they said that, no, we don't want a lawyer or some legal counsel to, counsel to look at this. But instead, Mette Frederiksen has to announce the election and it cannot be after October 4th. Right? That's the day where the Folgeting, the parliament, reopens. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So it's because of that. And then they're like, Mette, if you don't announce the election, we're going to have a vote of no confidence. Right? Basically, remove her from power. And nobody wants to be removed, so Mette Frederiksen, she's kind of been playing it cool for like three months. I think it was back in July, I think, they first said this, Radikale Venstre, they're like, yo, you got to do this. But then she was like, well, no, this is fine, I continue to do my job, blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, she did announce the election, and, and I think she handled it quite well, again, strategically speaking. She didn't seem faced by it, she just did what she had to do. So, yeah, that's how it is. And uh, then we'll see if Radikale Venstre will support her. They will only support Socialdemokratiet if Socialdemokratiet is willing to form a government. I think some polls they're saying that that it's looking a little bit better for the left right now. Uh, but I don't really know. Uh, I mean, nobody knows, right? It, but it's not like a, it's not a sure thing. It, there's still a lot of uncertainty. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but there's a couple of parties who are trying to get in. Uh, and DF, they have to fight for the survival, and the same goes for Alternative. Yes, let's see here. Now, what I want to show you now is this. This is from the last election, okay? And this is 2019, and you can see how the mandates were placed, distributed across the different parties, the parties that existed at the time, okay? So you got the Socialdemokratiet up here, of course. They got the most. Venstre, K. Dansk Folkeparti, Radikale Venstre, Socialistisk Folkeparti. Enhedslisten, Konservativ, Alternativ, Nye Borgerlige, Liberal Alliance. And then some names I cannot pronounce because I'm not from Fairy Islands or Greenland. These four parties are from the Fairy Islands. These two are from the Fairy Islands and these two are from Greenland. They also have to be counted because there's... I think it's like roughly 50,000 people living each. Like, yeah, 50,000 Greenland, 50,000 Fair Islands, more or less. So they do have some influence. Like, So, yeah. It's it's very interesting. There's a lot of variables, and nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. Now, before we end, I want to give you a couple of quotes. There are many quotes I could take from. Like, I was looking at some lists earlier, and I was like... It's hard to choose, but I chose these, and especially the first one is a real classic. Okay, so this is like uh, quotes through the through the years, and I think this first one is from the early nineties. Der er ikke fået noget ind under kultæppet. Der er ikke fået noget ind under kultæppet. I think that was his dialect when he said it. Nothing has been swept under the rock. It's a very famous uh, quote by Paul Sluter who was prime minister for quite a long time, uh, from early 80s to early 90s. And yeah, he, he said this, I think Paul Sluter, interesting spelling he's got here. This is maybe the most famous quote in Danish politics. And this other one, this is actually older. Man har et standpunkt, til man tager nyt. Man har et standpunkt, til man tager et nyt. You have one stance or position until you take a new one. So stance position, like it says, you know, you can change your opinion if you want. Right? It's a little bit uh, kind of a coward thing to say, but anyway, that's what he said. Ian Satokau, way back, I think it was the 70s or something. It's a long time ago. Yeah, this one is also interesting. It's going to require some context, so you won't get it. Stue rene, det bliver jeg aldrig. Stue 
rene. Det bliver i aldrig. You'll never be clean or mainstream. And that might look confusing, like what does that even mean? Um, Paul New Rasmussen, he was um, prime minister at the time. This was in the 90s. And he was talking to DF Dansk Folkeparti, and they're a new party at the time. So he basically said that your opinions or your policies are so terrible or so disgusting that you will never be popular. People can never talk about you in a normal way. Hey? But uh, he was wrong because in 2015 they totally crushed it. So yeah, it, but it, it's a it's a classic quote. And stu rain is an interesting word because it's sort of like you know very clean, like PG 13, you know, uh, not dangerous, that type of stuff. Yeah, not that we care so much about that in Denmark anyway. This other one, this uh, it, it's a very long one, so it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but uh, it's just funny because of the whole context. Du kan jo se mig i øjnene og se, hvor stålsat jeg er. Du kan jo se mig i øjnene og se, hvor stålsat jeg er. It's too bad I don't remember the cadence, the cadence of his voice, Anders uh, Samuelsen, when he said it. But he did say this back in 2015-16. Um, he was, uh, you know, sort of struggling with Lars Løkke, who was prime minister. I mean, he was supporting him, right? They were both like right wing, but but he had certain things that he didn't want to give up on. And he's like, look, I'm so serious. And in my eyes, I'm so determined. But uh, then he wasn't. And then it came back to bite him in the ass. He kind of bent. Oh, well. And then the last one is very short. But uh, she she took a lot of heat for this. So I got included. Live med det. Live med det. Live with it or deal with it. Some complaining. Mette Frederiksen, you know, didn't exactly do a good job. That At least that was the common uh, saying this was not very wise. Uh, and it's been used against her from time to time. Like whenever in the conversation we say Leo made it, then they're like, huh, Leo made it, huh? Referring back to the quote. So yeah, you know, her political opponents, opponents they're using it against her. So those were some quotes. And that was nice. Um, I thought this was really, really fun. Talking about politics it's it's an important thing um and i mean if you live in denmark then you are aware that that you know this is the stuff that we talk about you can go on drdk and then read about all these things in detail you can read about the different parties there is um there's a lot to know obviously this was uh, pretty quick but i hope that this helped i hope that you now have sort of an overview of the danish political system how it works how the prime ministers decided, you know, um, parliamentarism. Oh, maybe one last thing I can tell you. It's kind of cool. In Denmark, we have what we call uh, negative parliamentarism. And it basically means like negative parliamentarism, that you don't have to have a majority backing you to be like prime minister. You just have to avoid having a majority against you. So, you know, I don't think it has happened at least not in my lifetime, that has been the case, but it is theoretically possible for someone, and maybe one of these center parties, to not have a majority, but it's fine, because the people who are not with you, they're not, you know, in the same group, so there's like split, there's like one, two, three, or four. It's possible. <laughs> All right, there's a little bonus info. All right, guys, that was really cool. Oh, uh, let me check the live chat and see what's going on here. We got Amanda Thurston saying hi, uh, hi. Neilan Galaud saying thanks for doing this. Yeah, sure. Melina saying this is cool. Oh hell yeah, it is. Uh, Amanda Thurston saying I think I've seen it advertised on Facebook too. Yeah, Alex, Alex, right? Yeah, he did that. I mean, he's very uh, savvy with that. Andreas Butker saying hi, Thomas. Har alle at den medlemmer sidder i parlamentet? Uh, what do you mean? Tyskland, we have uh, five forskellige grupper i vores parlament. Der er mange mere, men de fleste af dem får ikke nok stemmer til at flytte ind. I'm not sure what you mean, though. Um, yeah, it's, you say only five groups in Germany, yeah? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, the members, they have to be anywhere, but you're still a member of the party. But, um, but yeah, if you want influence on these decisions, then you need to be in the parliament. Although, when the party has to choose a new leader, there's a vote when they decide to have that and then you can actually have influence on that uh, so so that happened like with DF 
I don't know, maybe a couple of hundred members, they chose uh, Morton Messerschmitt, right? He won. So, yeah. Uh, what else we got? For seeing, tak for sidst, og i dag det ligner sådan, okay, there is a spam. Uh, I music og i musik sagde, hej lager, jamen hej. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, okay, I think that was it. Thank you guys, and and as always, you know, remember to check out the website, and danishmastery.com. That's where the stuff is, that's where the learning is, the bonuses, all the videos, no ads, a lot of stuff, so uh, check it out. But seriously, thank you so much for watching, this was a lot of fun, and I'll see you soon. Peace.